I want to show you today a definition that assigns a color override to surfaces applied to walls according to the finish value contained in the room objects. On the screen I have a small set of offices uh, and each of the offices has been tagged based on the code uh, according to the room definition. When I select one of the rooms you're going to see that I have four different finishes one for each of orientation, and they are tagged accordingly to an orientation rule. Um, let me walk you through the definition. I start by collecting all the room boundaries in the project. Uh, this is going to exclude the rooms that have been placed. I use this filter mask to make sure those don't count and then I use this fantastic definition of the Spring Notes package. You can download it from the package manager. This is the Spring Curve Loop Simplified. So what happened with the room boundaries is that if they are intersected perpendicular by another wall, at every point intersection there's going to be a break in the line. And what I like about this node is it enables me to connect collinear um, lines and convert it into a single one. Uh, this is a fantastic uh, definition. The next problem is that I don't I want to exclude the tagging of small boundaries. Uh, so in order to exclude columns and let's say small shafts that uh, take place inside the work plane, I utilize the uh, surfaces based on a specific maximum area. In this case, I'm using this combination of nodes to tell Revit or to tell Dynamo to exclude all those areas whose area is uh, smaller than 9 square feet. This indeed could increase, but I don't want to make it too large to exclude, start excluding rooms as well. Um, at the end of this, I get all my polar curves, the ones used for the calculation. Another part of the definition is to uh, create the finished surface. These booleans create uh, or select the rooms that are in the project, meaning that exclude those that are not uh, in place. And then using the room height, uh, it uh, creates an extrusion um, for every surface and then convert them into a Revit geometry using this uh, great node called the Springs Direct Shape by Geometry. Each of the surfaces is converted into a generic model and to give it a unique name I uh, basically uh, use the word surface and add a suffix to it. One of the user's input is to uh, place a finished detail item. So what this is, is a small dot that is placed at a certain offset from the surface. And this little family is the one that's going to hold the finished information. Let me show you how this looks like. Um, I'm going to... Um, this is just a small circle with two lines and it has as an instance parameter uh, something I call code. So what this script is going to do basically is transfer the room information into the detail item uh, and then what you see here is the tag of that detail item dot. Let me show you how that looks like. I place this into a subcategory of the detail item types so that I can switch it off and it's not on top of my definition. Uh, so you can see now, you know, that's the little dot and this is a tag of the dot. So going back to that definition, this is the family of that detail item. It's going to be placed in a specific view and then all the information 
of the room, these are the room parameters, are going to be transferred into the uh, parameter code. Clockworks has this great uh, node that enabled, it to enabled me to place uh, instance family uh, at a specified location. So the whole point of this section is to uh, find the midpoint of each of the boundaries offset it by a distance of 1.5 at the co a relative coordinate system axis and then place on each of those locations a detail item that can be tagged. Uh, the tagging process take place in the next portion. Uh, in this uh, set of notes what I do is to fill the detail items with a finished code using dictionaries. I make use of the spring dictionary to match uh, the different orientations of the wall with uh, unique code. And then I tag the view using the tag by element node introduced also in the latest version of Dynamo. The lower port is very interesting one. This is the one that gives me the orientation of the different boundary lines. So the logic behind this is that I find the angle between the global shared coordinate x axis and each of the vectors and then use this conditional formula uh, to make sure that uh, I assign the appropriate orientation to the different lines based on the orientation. So if the orientation of the vector falls between 45 and 135, it receives the east designation and so forth. So from here I um, create a dictionary uh, and then for each of the orientations I assign a parameter value to the detail item which in turn basically absorbs the uh, parameter value of the finish. The last step is to override the color on the surface uh, by uh, applying a color override in the view based on key values. So here is the overview. Uh, it's a rather large uh, definition. But the beauty of this is that I can, this is going to work no matter the orientation of the rooms. So on the screen I'm going to quickly uh, do a selection of all this uh, geometry and I'm going to rotate it another uh, set of degrees, say um, not plus than 90. Uh, then I make the 3D view my active view, uh, go to the dynamo definition, run it. Uh, the new colors are applied to the different uh, definitions and the tags show correct. Alright, let me know if this works.